I was shocked to read that in 2019, 4.3 million of us got lip filler, and that's just the ones that we know about. On average, it's usually those aged between their 20s and 30s, from Megan Fox, Kylie Jenner, and even Molly May. These days, who doesn't have lip filler? And although lip filler is still on the rise, that comes with the dangers of poorly done procedures, which have now led a nation of dissolving, and so many horror stories. I never expected to be one of them. Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new. So for today's video I'm going to be bringing you all about my lip filler history and how I almost died getting my lip filler dissolved back in January. So stay tuned to hear all about what happened, my whole history with lip filler and I'm just going to give you a little bit of a backstory on my lip filler journey so far and why I did it, when I did it and just basically fill you guys in, no pun intended there, in the whole background and history of my lip filler process and journey in my life because going from this to this to this to this is a little bit of a journey and even though my history with lip filler isn't the worst case scenario I'm not gonna lie I do feel like my journey and my story is important to share with you guys because I do feel like even though this is not news anymore like we do know that these procedures don't go very well and they're not very safe and there are practitioners out there who just don't really care about you as a person and your appearance they just really care about the money to be honest with you and I I feel like generally it's just not very well like managed if I'm being honest like anyone can just go ahead and get one of these courses and qualify to do these procedures which is actually quite scary like I can literally go to a course right now and without any kind of medical background I can just qualify in lip filling which I think is crazy so let's rewind all the way back to the beginning on my first ever lip filler appointment I was 18 years old which was very very young I know but I was certain from a young age that it was something I was willing and wanted to do and as soon as I literally learned that you can do that as a procedure I booked it in and I did it for my 18th birthday and even though they did like a botched job over time it just didn't really work I don't regret having filler in the first place because personally for me I was bullied for my lips I hated the way they looked and it generally did bring me down so much I feel like Everyone's got a personal journey with getting fillers and aesthetics and all this sort of stuff. There's always a reason behind why people do it, I feel like. And for me, I was very insecure about the way I looked, especially my lips. And I just didn't feel very feminine, very pretty, and I just didn't feel very attractive at all. I was in a new relationship. I've never been in a relationship before. And it just made me feel a little bit different about myself. And yeah, basically when I turned 18, I had my lip filler done. And I think I paid around £140 for one meal or 1.5 at the time. I'm not 100% sure, but here's a picture of what they looked like immediately after, and I was obsessed. Like, I absolutely loved the way they looked, even though they were like complete duck face and swollen. Once it fades, it's actually quite normal. Um, and you probably won't even notice half of the people around you right now who have lip filling, because sometimes it is really unrecognizable these days, especially if it's done correctly, which is the main point here. If it's done correctly, I don't think it's a bad thing. And if it's done really, really badly, and people get ill and have really bad reactions, then obviously you really need to consider that as one of the possibilities as well with this journey if you are looking at this video because you've booked in a lip filler appointment and you're just now scared do your research and basically yeah that's all I'm gonna say around that I was 18 years old I was young I don't really regret it I just wish I kind of did more research into it if that makes sense because I wouldn't have had to have years worth of filler dissolved in the meantime from day one I would have stuck to that person and my lips would have been consistent and I would have known exactly what was in my lips to basically prevent having this severe allergic reaction that I had. I have written some notes down because I can't always remember off by heart when I'm doing these sort of videos because it is a lot to remember. So if I am looking down at any point, I have got a little bit of pointers down there just to kind of recap my memory because yeah, lately is bad. Just to add this in as well, I have just come off of night shift. So if I do look a little bit tired, that is why. So yeah, I had my first lip filler done. I think the year was 2015 or maybe even 2000. Yeah, it's got to be 2015 that I had it done for the first time. And I felt amazing. It really did boost my confidence. I loved it. I just felt so good. I felt pretty. I felt like I can smile. I felt, yeah, I just didn't feel embarrassed to be me. I know that's really sad and I know there are other ways to kind of work on that. But at the time, I felt like that was the only way and I just knew what I wanted and that was it. And yeah, it did change my life. It changed my confidence. Um, I wouldn't be doing YouTube. I wouldn't be doing most of the things I'm doing day to day if it wasn't for that procedure being done. And I know that sounds really small minded and... I don't know, really superficial in a way, but generally I feel like I am quite accepting of why I did it in the first place. I don't regret that and I'm going to keep saying that because 
I just knew how I felt inside and I just didn't feel very good about myself at all. I then went for a top up, I think two years later with someone else. So I used a different practitioner, which I think it's where you get yourself in trouble. Like these are the things that I wish I were told when I was basically getting my lips done is like the dangers of doing that, if that makes sense. Because I feel like I made a massive mistake by doing that. I went to various different practitioners over the years. And even though I probably ended up with around four mil in my lips, I did it really like spaced out because I absolutely hated the way it felt. It was so painful and I just really didn't like doing it. I hated the needles, I hated the numbing cream, I hated the way they used to massage the lip filler into your lips. It was just awful. And yeah, for pain, I just didn't take to it very well. I was young and I just, yeah, it scared me every time I did it because there is a needle literally going inside of your lip and fill it in with stuff that you just don't don't really know what it is basically so yeah I always had that in mind when I had my lips done so it wasn't something that I was addicted to I didn't get it done like every five six months or every year I kind of did it like every two years I feel like after I had it done the first time I had it done again when I was 21 I think and then again when I was 23 and then I think again when I was 25 something like that and I haven't had it done since I'm not sure maybe a year after Covid I had it done again um, but like 0 0.5 so it wasn't like you know heavy amounts of filler in at once and as you can see by the picture here it wasn't over over filled if i'm being honest i don't know if that's my opinion or not if i'm being like gaslighting myself there or not but yeah i don't feel like they were that bad i feel like it definitely could have been worse but yeah if it wasn't for the fact i didn't actually feel comfortable getting them done i might have been addicted to it who knows but yeah and also i just want to add as well that lip filler is the only ever filler or cosmetic thing i've actually had done to my face or body um it's just the one thing that i feel like i was just very insecure about and wanted to get done like i don't really care about anything else like botox and all the other procedures that you can get i haven't had done i don't really have any interest if that makes sense it was just purely the fact i just didn't like the appearance of my lips and i just don't really feel like the need to add more to it because the insecurity and the feeling towards that just isn't there the same way it was with my lips if that makes sense over time i basically went to various different practitioners and i think the only reason behind that was i just liked the way their pictures looked on instagram and the results and the way they looked behind all of that i always kind of felt disappointed that my lips never really looked like that like no matter what happened even the swell my lips never looked the way they did on their instagram pages and then eventually the feelings of like feeling insecure came back like maybe i'm just not meant to be pretty or not meant to look like that or whatever that that was in my mind I don't really know what that was but um I haven't had that for many many years this was definitely teenage hormonal stuff probably but yeah I feel like now I don't actually have that attachment to my appearance in that way maybe because I've had my lips done I've had my braces done and I've gone back to my natural sort of color I, I don't know maybe it's all kind of part of the growing and adult process that you kind of shift yourself into that way of being i don't know if i'm making sense in this video but i hope you get the gist one of the big mistakes as well that i feel like i regret is the fact that i truly believed that every single practitioner could fix my lips now when i had my lips done for the first time back in 2015 the lady who did my lips was not the best she never had a website i found her in a doctor's surgery and yeah long story short my lips started to kind of sag a little bit here after the two years and it probably was natural migration or she filled them incorrectly but yeah they started to sag a little bit and i wasn't that upset about it but i knew it was happening and i didn't really know what it was either because i just didn't really understand the pros and cons of getting filler because no one talked about it no one told you so when i went to my second appointment i basically asked her to kind of like fix it and they told me that they could do it with filler which now i know many years ahead that that's not a thing like you just cannot fix filler with filler you just kind of you just can't do it i'll skip to that towards the end but yeah i kind of went along that route so basically i was getting more filler to kind of fill my lips to kind of get rid of all the bumps and lumps from the previous practitioner and the filler overall my lips were kind of slowly getting like mangled up and just not looking like lips anymore and as you can see here when i found my current practitioner she actually showed me the underneath of my lips which i've never even considered looking at before i've never looked at it before and it was such a big shock for me and yeah that was a moment for me where i was like something needs to change something needs to be done to fix this and i didn't know what it was the sad thing is i generally believe that every single practitioner told me that they can fix the filler with more filler and just make it look nice and shiny and new and really nice plump lips and yeah 
really feminine and the way I kind of every time I showed them the picture of what I wanted like, yeah yeah we can do that we can make it work and obviously it didn't and the amount of massaging on the lips to kind of get rid of the bumps and lumps that they did was just excruciating the pain was just so unbelievable if you guys have ever had filler and you've ever had that experience if you've got lumps right now they just don't really fade by themselves they will kind of stick around for a couple of years so if you're not willing to get your lip filler dissolved they are just gonna have to be something you kind of have to learn to live with because they're not going anywhere anywhere soon i actually researched how you can actually get the lumps removed because i never realized how bad they were and you can actually get them like injected out like so you get the needle in and it compresses and they squeeze out all the filler which i think is absolutely horrifying and i just couldn't imagine anything worse that would be so so painful so i literally commend anyone who's gone through that because that just looks so painful and i might be over exaggerating because my pain threshold is a little bit hit and miss but yeah i just don't enjoy that especially on your face it is kind of scary on top of that and it does make you feel a bit anxious as well i'm not gonna lie but regardless of that believe it or not i didn't care because i actually had some kind of lip like i was grateful that i had filler i was grateful that they didn't look the way they did at the beginning because i absolutely hated that feeling like the whole attachment to my lips was just on a different level so yeah i do not regret like i said before i don't regret having it done but obviously as the years go on it kind of just does get to that point where it's like what are we trying to achieve here you know so fast forward then because i just want to keep this video a little bit quick and hopefully as useful as i can without going off track too much so i never actually planned to get my lips dissolved or fixed all right i'm gonna be honest with you guys when i went to my latest appointment back in december i went with the intention to fix my lips with more filler with someone brand new that i researched online a little bit more credible than the rest i've been going to over the past couple of years i'm not gonna lie and obviously to this day i am so grateful for all of the work that she's done for me to help kind of reverse the trouble that i went through with my lip procedures and transform my lips again into something that i feel like i can feel a bit more confident with day to day so yeah when i went to my appointment with the new practitioner straight away she looked at my lips and was like I'm not gonna refill you I was absolutely gutted because I've left it for around three or four years since I had my lips filled and I was at that point where I was like I was desperate to get my lip volume back again and get the little saggy bits kind of plumped back up for like a temporary kind of thing and yeah she told me that she wasn't gonna do it because she didn't feel like it was appropriate in the past that people have decided to fill my lips knowing that the outcome was never going to be having a nice looking lip basically and yeah so she basically gave me advice and the only person who ever gave me advice to get them dissolved basically i've heard some horror stories and i felt like yeah i just had to do a bit more research on that before i committed to even doing that because there was a point at that point where I was like I'm literally gonna look like this forever now I've made the decision when I was 18 years old to get my lip fillers done and over the years I've just ruined them that reality hit like what did I do why have I done that and why did I do it the way I did and why was there no research why did I I don't know how to explain it but yeah all of that was playing through my mind when she told me that she couldn't refill them anymore it was just not gonna look the way I want them to look and it's just it wasn't an achievable goal basically so yeah I had around four mil of filler over the past couple of years through various practitioners probably various products as well like all different types of brands maybe um, I started off with 1.5 mil and then I had a 0 0.5 and I had a 1 and a 0 0.5 and a 1 and yeah that kept going on for like what I would say five, six, seven, eight years, eight years, I would say, eight or nine years off and on, something like that. So people were just basically profiting off me and I really didn't have much gain other than the fact I had some bit of volume in my lips and I didn't have when I was 18 years old. Christ, I'm going to drink a drink because that was a mouthful. So yeah, after listening to my practitioner explain to me how I've been basically kind of like filler abused by practitioners in the past and paying people to ruin my appearance which wasn't the goal of having filler and getting that sort of work done is to not look worse is to look better and to feel good and obviously that was getting to a point where it wasn't anymore at this point i was like well i kind of have to reverse everything i've done to myself i've done this to myself and even though i spent so much money on getting this done because lip filler isn't cheap it isn't affordable it is quite an expensive procedure to have done especially over time like to build up volume to build up shape it takes a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of work so that was quite hard to let go of but i was like you know what i can't live the rest of my life having this feeling about my lips and maybe regretting them in the future um so yeah i decided to get my filler dissolved 
and yeah let's go into it so basically i had my lip filler dissolved and it's called a hydro hydrolyse i'll put it here what it's called because i just can't remember these words they're just too wordy for me too many letters in there for me to pronounce especially after a night shift and i think the dissolver actually cost 150 pounds i think it was i'm not 100 sure but it's basically almost the same price as it was to get my filler done so it ended up costing me that original appointment to get more filler in ended up costing me double because I had to get my filler dissolved and then eventually refill them again if that was something I was willing to do. We had to do a patch test because I think legally and just you should get a patch test done with this because it's one of those things where it can be life or death maybe if you do have a bad reaction and the patch test showed a red mark so it was just basically done on my arm here and just came up with a little red mark around nothing severe I didn't feel funny I didn't have any reactions I didn't feel unwell so yeah we decided to go ahead with the filler process and yeah when you get your filler dissolved they obviously numb you up the same way they do when they put the filler in and they inject like the filler dissolver all around your lips and then they give it a good old massage which is absolutely painful at times and yeah it's just very uncomfortable at first i didn't actually have any reactions i did feel okay she kept asking me reassuring me if everything felt right and i said yeah i'm fine and then eventually like five minutes later i started getting like chest pains and i wasn't sure if it was nerves at first i wasn't sure what was happening because i've never really struggled with like i don't know i've never really had like heart problems or heart issues or anything like that but i definitely felt a bit tight around my chest at this point the massaging was all done and the lip filler dissolver was done so i sat up and i just felt a little bit dizzy and then obviously i looked in the mirror and my face just started swelling like immediately all around my face it was swollen again that could have been just the filler kind of like dissolve around my face because let's be honest i've had years worth of filler at this point and it probably has literally migrated all around my face so i don't i don't really know the science behind the dissolving in that detail but maybe that's why that happened why my face swell up i would never know but i did have quite a bad reaction and tightness and chest pain and my face was just getting so so big and it's going right up to my eyes as well at this point we both started panicking a little bit like at first i literally did almost die laughing at the way i looked until it started swelling up and like i was like shit like i'm actually reacting quite badly for reassurance if you're going somewhere and you're getting lip filler dissolved they do have to have an epi pen on hand in case you do have a reaction so she had one of those just in case and was this close to using it but we didn't as my face was swelling up like a balloon and my chest pain was quite tight we immediately called 999 to obviously get some help and support obviously i couldn't talk because my face was literally so swollen i could have literally like flew away that it was that bad and it did feel awful i'm not gonna lie but i do see the funny side of it because i would never ever hopefully touch wood look like that again and i would just love it if one day someone put that on a birthday card it's not iconic that i almost died but it's just iconic that your face can look like that from like moments before looking normal to like that if that makes sense it's just crazy how that can happen in just such a short amount of time like yeah it could be life or death literally that quick with anything and it's just crazy um so the reality kicked in that i could be having a proper bad reaction to this we called 999 and they basically told me that i needed to go to the hospital they wasn't going to come and collect me in the ambulance um probably because my symptoms weren't that bad but at that point i was quite scared because i was stuck in the middle of town i didn't have any car or vehicle or anyone who would get me there so obviously my practitioner had to ring my next of kin so i think it was my sister who came in the end i'm not quite quite sure my sister i think came down to town picked me up and took me to a and e where i had some uh like anti reaction injections i think it was or something like that but yeah it was a bit of a crazy scary story so basically i could have had an anaphylactic shock if it got any worse or if yeah so it could have been that bad where i could have gone and had a seizure or something like worse like that i'm not really sure what the really bad effects would have been but luckily for me it was literally just swelling all over a few palpitations and tightness around my chest which luckily didn't develop into anything worse because that would have just been so scary and i think for my family would have been just yeah awful for me to go through all because of my appearance and the way i looked and just having filler like i feel like they would have had a massive grudge towards me if something happened because of it so yeah i'm so grateful that obviously nothing really bad that actually did happen in the end um but the reaction was bad enough to basically end up in a and e so do be aware of that as a basically a warning like if you are gonna go and get fillers done 
make sure you're putting the right research in because this is your face that you're gonna have to put up with for the rest of your life if it goes wrong and obviously there are side effects to getting it reversed as well so just be aware that if you do get it done there could be a chance that you might have to get it undone in the future because we just don't really know like there's not enough research behind filler in general to be honest with you and just in terms of like how it can affect you long term. I do believe I was allergic to the dissolver mainly because I had so many different variants of filler in my lips. I haven't had a consistent amount of product. It's been like all sorts of different stuff going inside there. Um, I just don't feel like my face and my body reacted that well to it and maybe it did migrate everywhere and the hydro hydrolyse I don't know how to call it maybe it was doing its thing and it was all around my face and that's why my face has been swollen who knows so yeah as it stands my current situation then I have had my lip filler put back in I was a little bit undecisive when I had them dissolved whether I was going to keep it that way I actually left it two months before I had any lip filler put back in just because I wanted to make sure that was the best decision for me and I really wanted to kind of like see how I felt with having all that filler out for the first time in almost 10 years. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I did not enjoy it. I absolutely hated my appearance. I didn't feel comfortable. I felt like I was going out in a public naked. I really did feel very vulnerable. And I just, yeah, I just didn't feel very like happy with that. Yeah, I feel like I'm allowed to feel like that. I feel like I made that decision in the first place and I still feel like that now. I do know it's like an internal issue with the way I feel about my appearance but I just feel a lot more confident and happier and that's the main thing that I do feel happy with what I've done. So when I went back to see my practitioner to get my filler put back in, we agreed to put in one meal just to see how it would go and see if there was any muscle memory from my filler before. It didn't really swell that much. It kind of just looked a little bit natural like to a point where you probably would not even know I had filler in at all. It was that kind of like unnoticeable if I'm being honest with you. And again, I thought I'd sit on that for a little bit, see how I felt and yeah, I had a another meal put back in in the beginning of July I think it was so I've currently got two meal of lip filler in right now and I've also got a lip flip which I had done about a month ago um, around the end of August and that was basically to help reduce like a gummy smile so as you can see when I smile it's kind of like covers up my gummy smile I guess so yeah I don't really know how to word that but yeah so that is my current filler process and my current kind of lip journey right now and I do feel like following my experience with having multiple different practitioners and the horror story of almost dying or having a bad reaction to the filler dissolver I definitely won't be jumping around to different practitioners in the future I'll be sticking to the one I've got now because she's really really lovely really good and she makes me feel safe and comfortable and yeah I just feel like I can trust her a lot more she's given me the best advice so far and I'm so glad I took it because I feel like without that I would have probably felt insecure or even worse than I felt before I had filler done in the first place because they would have definitely looked worse if I left it any more longer or if I just kept getting them filled in more and more and more. God, my throat is so dry still. I do feel really, really happy with the way my lips look right now. I feel like they're the best they've ever looked since I've ever had lip filler done. They feel more natural. I love the shape. I love the way they look when I smile. And I just feel like they've changed my face so much and they just made it look more softer, more feminine. And yeah, I just really, really like the way they look right now. And I don't feel like I'm going to add more volume in. I'll probably add a few maintenance appointments in, like a 0 0.5 and maybe a year and a half's time or something like that. Or maybe stick with the lip flips because I feel like they are just as good as getting filler in. If your lips are any like mine and they kind of curl under when you laugh or smile, it is a very common thing and you don't need to be insecure about it. And if you're not insecure about it, you don't need to be because of this video because I am. It's just something that I've always felt a bit uncomfortable about and I was bullied for it when I was younger. So it did have a bit of a psychological logical feeling towards getting filler if that makes sense but yeah I definitely don't feel like you need to get filler done just because you feel influenced by someone or because someone else has got it I definitely don't feel like that's the way to go um if you're not insecure about it now I wouldn't worry about it but obviously if you do get it done there's no judgment either you know like do what you gotta do but I'm just yeah that's the only advice I feel like I can give now having the experience I've been through and just the knowledge that I've had from having it done over the past couple of years I just feel like I can give better advice about it especially to myself I know now I would never do that sort of stuff again I wouldn't just be going around getting a filler done because that one's cheaper than the other one yeah I definitely will be sticking to my practitioner now so yeah if you have any questions about my lip filler and anything that you feel like you have 
I haven't actually answered in this video let me know in a comment section down below and I will get back to you guys on that because I do feel like this is such an important topic and it's not spoken about enough or people are a bit ashamed of it and just don't really speak very honestly and openly about it but I am quite an honest and open person if things like this are going to help people then I feel very happy to be able to speak about it if that makes sense so yeah I hope you guys have found this video useful and if you are getting filler dissolved then definitely get your patch test done make sure they do have the EpiPen on hand if you're going to take anything away from this video then definitely research your practitioner read all the reviews the good the bad the ugly look at the before and after photos so yeah that is my horror story on getting my lip filler dissolved and my whole lip filler background and everything like that hope I kept on topic for you guys and like I said hit me up with any questions comments or anything you want to know in the comment section down below and I will get back to you guys on that. As always thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!